Sorry, Sam, how's that? Is that better? Can you hear me now? All right, hopefully you can hear me now, Sam. Sorry about that. Perfect, all right. All right, so thanks for joining us. I feel like I said this twice, but I said it to myself, obviously. Thanks for yelling that out, Sam. I appreciate it. And uh, and welcome to our live stream of Masters of the Universe. So I'll go over a little bit where we're at and what we're doing. So just trying to anchor this character down here at the moment and give it a sort of strength and weight for He-Man, making sure that it can kind of really sort of stand up on its own. And because it's such a flagship and an iconic character, we want to make sure that we get this part right. Because you know, even though we, uh, you know, we can sort of get away with it with Beast Man and some of these other ones that we've done. And I'll just show you the Beast Man. You can see that you know we can sort of get away with sort of moving it around, shifting it around in different dynamic poses. The He Man one has really got to have its have its own sort of uh, standalone iconic pose. I'm good, Sam. I hope you're doing well too. What's happening where you're at at the moment? All right, so we're just going to start to continue to put in some of these these sort of iconic areas and making sure these muscles on this character are, even though they might not be atomically spot-on correct, it's got to feel like it's... Uh, it's strong and intense, and, uh, and and hopefully we're trying to get the shadows to align with that a bit. So a big thank you to everyone that's joining us here today, and obviously to the people that have encouraged and shared this out early on in the piece. Um, it's always good to have that encouragement, especially when you're at the drawing board and you don't always see what's going on out there in the big wide world it's nice to have that kind of um encouragement from different people saying you know let's get it going let's share it let's let's um let's do something that's art focused which is really good and um and hopefully it's a place where we can all sort of share our art so from this point if you didn't know if you um, if you weren't aware of what was happening on Facebook, is that the Artists of the Universe is a group uh, site that is not really belonging to any one of us, but it's just a collective where we've got our themes going and we can put um, our artworks uh, finished on there on for sale. Um, there's no commission taken by anyone. It really goes to your own um, shop or your own form of how you sell your art. Um and that way, you know, it's, it's really just about the artist and the art and celebrating that. And, and too, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what expertise level you come in at. It's really just a case of how we support each other as a community, how we learn from each other uh, without ego. So I want to make sure that we just get that link in there. But, um, yeah, it's, the intention is really just to, to support each other and, and to have something that's, you know, it doesn't require a membership fee or some sort of commission. It's really just something where it's art and the artists and the people that love the art can sort of come together. All right, so I think that's good for the legs. We're happy to keep that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I keep the tracing paper there because I get that problem where I tend to smear it with my hand. Um so, yeah, it's, it's for that reason. So I can move across it without end up having with half my pencil work collected over the image. Um, but, yeah, I guess it must be because my hand does sweat a little bit, Sam. So I guess it's it's probably what's creating that reaction on the page. But um, I tend to try and keep my pages uh, reasonably clean, as clean as I can anyway. Um, and the lean on paper just helps me to do that. Um, and if I'm doing a larger scale work, like if I'm doing an oil painting or if I'm doing acrylic, um, I'll have some timber set up where I'm leaning over the work rather than laying on the piece or leaning on the piece. Um, 
I hope that makes sense. But that, it works for me anyway. So, but yes, it's uh, from years of getting frustration of having things blend around, including ink. When you're doing an ink work, I end up having it all over the piece. And I know artists like Candy Coleran has this great uh, glove that he uses that pre prevents that from happening. Um, I'm not quite that advanced yet. I, I tend to just use a bit of tracing paper. And the tracing paper is good because I can still see under it as I'm moving it around. Just getting a little bear skin. I'm assuming bear skin or some creature skin sort of fur boots in. And it's funny, there's been lots of, when you look at the references, there's lots of different iterations for these boots. Sometimes they're really thin lining. Sometimes they're really chunky. Um, trying to give it a bit of a happy medium there somewhere. Yeah, right, a winter glove. That's interesting. So, Sam, what are you working on at the moment? Are you working on anything right now? Are you drawing along with us or are you doing your own thing? Um, and if you are, feel free to put your links for your thing, for your artwork or your shop in the chat section below too. It's good to share these things out. And put down where people can find you if you're working on any products, any books or art prints or any appearances. I might actually leave that one there. I'll we'll finish the bit off with one strap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Focus is a big thing, isn't it, for sure? It's, um, it's the artist's journey, isn't it, to uh, to try and not um, get distracted or after the day job finding time. You know, it's always a it's always a tricky thing. Right. Let's get that sort of shadowing. There's a bit of a guide. Like I said, it's trying to get that lighting from that top right area down through the bottom. The killer care bears, tell me more about that. That would make an interesting chess symbol, I imagine. Just trying to get that the fur of the boot in there, just on that right side. So we can sort of get ready to. for a clean gouache session.
So tell me about that, Sam. It, it, you're trying to get your stuff straight. Explain that one to me. So welcome if you're just joining us here on our live stream as we're moving through the He-Man universe one image at a time. Hopefully you don't go too insane by the time we hit 52. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. It's always good for us and helps us as artists to get the word out there, to beat the algorithms, all that kind of stuff. And awareness is the greatest gift you can give any of us. So helping us to advertise our work and helping us to be sort of um, in front of people's eyes is always super helpful. So if you can, put it out there, share it out there while we're live or afterwards, it's always super helpful. We're going to try and do these once a week if we can, depending on everyone's schedules. And, of course, as we move along, I'll invite people on as part of the Artists of the Universe group that are drawing along with us. So... It won't be just me yakking to you in the ear. It'll be others as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Sam. I don't know why there's a lot of attention at the moment. It's, um, I think we had the Kevin Smith series come out, but I, I think too, it's um, probably got a lot to do with nostalgia and, you know, it's like most things, isn't it? Like when times get tricky people tend to look to what makes them feel happy and when things are simple and um, and entertainment's always a good escape. I hate using that word escapism, but it's certainly a, a nice distraction. Um, it's like a big warm blanket of, of sword and sorcery. You know? <laughs> like it's like, I suppose like Dungeons and Dragons has made a, a bit of a revival as well. I guess people like to explore in those realms and those worlds. Um, but uh, I think the Kevin Smith series got a lot of attention with this too. Like, I mean, even though a lot of people didn't agree with the portrayal of some of the characters, I think, you know, the stories were interesting and um, and engaging and I think and the animation was nice. So it's, it's such a strong property and I guess probably just one that's been maybe underused a bit, you know. Like it's, it's really something that... Um, you know, since the 80s when they made that film, they really haven't done much more with it. There really hasn't been a, a reboot film or a series. So, you know, who knows? I mean, you can only hope and dream, can't you? That something exciting would come out of it. Um, but you also had sort of this, the toys of um, are constantly being revived and brought out in different series. And, you know, so there's certainly an audience for it. So tell me, who, who was your go-to characters in the Motu universe, Sam? All right, so just trying to get a little bit of this rock down here. I'm thinking maybe having the earth cracked with a bit of sort of magma running through the middle there, which will create a nice secondary light source for the character, but also um, get some nice steam and sort of smoke sort of channeling up through the middle there, which will be, which will be fun too. Yeah, I agree. The animation was pretty good, Sam. It's, um, I think they, uh, they really took hold of that that anime kind of action scenes, which were fantastic. Um, and they got the uh, the great soundtrack that they from Bear McCreary, which is really good too. So, yeah, they kind of really captured it nicely.
Yeah, you kind of don't want to reboot, do you? You just kind of want them to build on, you know, build on the universe, which would be good. So nothing sort of has to be retold again, you know. I'm going to try and light that up there a bit. Are they your favourites? So Skeletor, Triclops, Stratos. Yes, yeah, Stratos is one of my favourites. Orko, yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it wasn't insane. All of them were pretty out there designs, weren't they, really? But um, it's just something about them Just I just loved, you know. But, I might so can crack the earth off of this way a little bit too. So some of these pencil work's just a little bit rough, but that's okay. It's just going to give me an indicator when I start to put in my underlay of gouache as to where my lighting will fall. And what's sort of happening it gives me a bit of a roadmap. Well, Sam, what a great opportunity. You know, like I, I was looking at some of the styles for the, the Masters of the Universe thing that we're working on and, um, you know, not everyone has to draw realistically or with realism. You know, some people can – there's so many different styles, you know. Like, I mean, if you, if you start safely, go to somewhere where, you know, you can move in with a bit of with a bit of ease and, and it might be a case where you're just doing um the faces or you could be doing it in a style like Funko Pop or you could be you know or Chibi or or something where it's maybe a little bit more minimized. You could even do Lego versions of the of the He Man characters, you know, like it's there's a there's a certain um there's a certain uh, like ease when it comes to to drawing when you can start safely, you know, before you start sort of working in areas that are becoming really stressful and difficult. I mean, if you if you start where you know it, the imagery is really um, stylistic in shapes and and simpler, it might be might be a better entry point for you. Um, but I would encourage anyone if you're going to start, just start playing around with with shapes and color and and do what do what you like doing you know my 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 son is doing the uh master universe challenge as well because he loves it but um he's only doing you know sort of the anim the cartoon version on telly but he's only doing the um the upper torso area the like each character so just do whatever makes you happy So what we'll do is we'll just clean that area up a bit in the back. Oh. 
Right. Got some of those sort of funky rock shapes that they have in that He Man universe. You always got some giant sort of evil looking, sharp, daggery looking rocks sticking out everywhere. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I think that's the thing too, isn't it? Our own, sometimes our own motivation, Sam, is, is you know, it's good to have that sort of forced theme. Um, I'm a bit the same. I tend to, I don't tend to like to drift around. Um, I like to have a project to work on. It's always fun, you know. Um, so, you know, I often write my own little lists, you know, like I've done with the He-Man one. You know, you can see, I'll, sh I'll bring it up again. So you can see we've, we're sort of going along through this list, uh, which is available on that Facebook group, um, and kind of just ticking them off as we go, you know, just a bit of fun with no pressure involved to it. Um, so, you know, if you need a theme, you always feel free to join us with what we're doing. You, you know, you can do that. Um, but that's totally up to you, man, whatever you want to do. But look, I mean... You've got to pick the right course too, and you've got to make sure that you feel pretty aligned with the teaching. Um, and there's lots of stuff on YouTube now. Like you can go to, um, you know, like obviously David Finch does a lot of stuff with comics and proportions, and he does a great job with those things. But you've got um, uh, Proko, P-R-O-K-O, -O, which is a great little illustrator site where they do a whole bunch of stuff. And I think they actually run courses as well whole bunch of stuff on um, on the human anatomy. They go to some of the classics um, on human dynami dynamism and how to make the pose cinematic, but also holding to your um, to your correct anatomy and making sure that you are aligning yourself with, you know, making sure measurements and things like that are correct. So Proko is a good one for that, Stan Pro Prokopenko. And, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, he's, he's good for that reason, even if you need as a reference. Um, <laughs> they are, there's a lot of things that are easier, but, um, but, you know, it doesn't have to be a massive commitment either. It could be just something fun just to do on the side, you know, a couple of hours here or there. Um, even if you did little ink drawings, you know, just the faces or something. Yeah, but it's been a, I, I do remember Sam Bailey, but it's been a while since I've seen um, some of your stuff. Perhaps, you know, I just haven't been seeing it. But, um, yeah, colour pencils are good. What colour pencils are you using? Are you, use, are you go Prisma, like top of the range, or do you go 
so mid range, low range. What what do you use, and and tell us how you are uh, you apply it. Trying to get his hand in. Trying to do it. Oh, polychromos, yeah. They're fun to use and they blend nicely too, don't they? And they've got a real nice sort of richness in, in, in intensity. Um, do you tend to use white um, in between your layers to blend or do you use, I've heard some artists use like a, a 3H pencil, like, how do you sort of build your layers when you when you're doing your color work? Yeah, yep. Yeah, I teach, when I'm, I'm teaching at school, we use the uh, just the standard, you know, fabric of that you buy down at the shops but uh, with the kids. But, um, yeah, definitely the uh, the white's a good blender in between them, isn't it? Or, or, a, um, or a harmonious colour tends to blend in nicely as well. Um, but, yeah, I, the white works just as fine. I... I I've never tried the the H pencil. I mean, I, I look at um, some of those artists, especially ones that belong to Greenwich Workshop, uh, that do a lot of the sort of uh, Western art. Um, and I've seen some of their pencil work. They look like oil paintings. They just blow my mind. It's incredible. But uh, you know, it's it's having paper that holds your your, your colours without tearing, and it's isn't it? And it's also about um, how you can sort of build your layers without too much of too much surface work happening but um yeah before i started gouache color pencils were my go-to as well i mean they were just it's kind of a safe thing because uh i did a lot of oil painting when i was younger and it's always so hard to um to get a handle on if uh you know you're sort of unfamiliar with that stuff but and it can be scary because you're pushing that liquid around and trying to find the, the balance moment when, you, when you're just about right, you know. So colour pencils are kind of a nice balance between drawing and painting. Um, what's that? You've, let me just read that. I've seen people using a solvent that I've been, ah, oh, I don't know anything about that. That's interesting. Yeah, gouache is good because it's... Um, what I like about it is that if you if you've got a crazy schedule, you know, like you're in and out and you're up and down, and I, you know, my kids at home keep me very busy, and and so does work. Gouache is good because it's the only it's like a happy medium between paint and watercolors, and um, and it allows you to reactivate the paint when you come back to it. it you can get it moving again and blending again. Um, and it has a lot of vibrancy. Like when you finally get to the finished product, it, it's hard to see it when you're online, but, you know, even when you post your final images, but when you, you've got it in a room with you, there's a real vibrancy to it. It kind of glows because uh, there's a lot of heavy chroma, which is, which is perfect. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, gouache is a very old product, more of an illustrator's um, medium that goes back a long time. Um, it's kind of like a, a quicker medium because it didn't allow for oil paints to dry, you know, so gouache sort of does, dries as you're going. Um, and it holds a lot of that same chroma or value. Um, but uh, I, I chose it as a next step because... Um, I liked the idea of the reactivation of it and it held a bit more sort of guts in the colour, whereas I felt um, watercolours didn't quite have what I wanted. And I've seen some beautiful watercolour work, don't get me wrong, but it, for me it just didn't quite chime as well. I mean, and you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for that stuff anyway. Like, I mean, I, I followed Alex Ross and and um, Joe Jusco and, and some of these guys that, that did some beautiful work uh, in, in paints um and uh and so i kind of was just watching and, and seeing what they were up to buying every book that they had out you know trying to learn by reverse engineering their style or technique and because i was doing realism for years anyway but having that um having that that color medium as that next step for me was just was just what i wanted to see so i'm just going to lighten up this ab area a little bit here But in saying that too, it took me a little bit of time to, to get the handle on it. It wasn't something that happened pretty quickly. Um, just knowing how certain colours, because they're obviously labelled a little bit differently again to all paints, which you think, okay, well, I just started my basics. I'll start collecting my warm, cool tones and neutrals. But it's just understanding how, to, how the, the medium reacts to how fast you want to work or how slow you want to work or what you're using it for, you know. Yeah, I'm not a um, – I feel a little bit the same about acrylics, but I think sometimes maybe I just haven't found the right brand. Like I – my experience with acrylics is, is reasonably limited, but um, I, I'm not a big fan of the amount of plastic in it. It just feels a bit too rubbery and tends to um, – I just tend to have it lift too much when I'm painting, but I'm sure that's got to do with my um, time spent practicing with it rather than maybe the medium i don't know but i just find it a bit uh yeah, it's a bit too rubbery for me um it's completely different to oils which is like painting with butter you know it's a very buttery sort of medium yeah maybe <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's all it is. Maybe we just do suck at it. I don't know. You could be right. All right, so. Let's get a little angle happening here with this sword. So if you are just joining us, we're at now probably the one hour mark. So welcome if you are joining us for the first time. And um, and uh, and hopefully you're doing well. And and if you keep coming back each week, we will you'll see a bit of progress in different characters. And um, and we're all trying to just encourage Sam at the moment to. To draw along with us. <laughs> but um, if you are choosing to draw along, 
feel free to do so. And don't forget to post your artwork links in the chat and anything else that you're working on. And um, and or just uh, just relax into the process. If you have any questions, happy to share. I want me to bring that around a bit. His fingers are a bit closer. Yes, yeah, so I could be the catalyst, Sam. This could be it. This could be my life, my life's mission of getting you to draw again. Such a cool design for a sword. Uh, the time now, the future, we are now at five to midday on a Sunday. So we are, you guys must be, must be around about what, nine o'clock at night. Is that right? 9.55 maybe. So I might get this sword in and then we might call it a show for this week and next week we'll start laying in our paints in our background. So I'm thinking maybe just a hint of grayscale in the background. What do you reckon, Sam? Maybe just to the left a bit, just a misty sort of in the distance sort of thing. I don't know. Yeah, the um, there's a great doco on um, on iTunes and as well. I think it's on Tubi as well now. It's called The Power of Grayskull, and um, it's a really it's really beautifully put together. This these these guys that made this doco and they're, they're doing one I think on Conan as well. But um, and then there's the toys that made us on Netflix. There's a great there's a good one on that show as well, and it talks about you know, how this, this toy company were sick and tired of buying um, licenses and costing them a fortune. And then it would always be dependent on whether the film was a success or not as to whether they were able to sell their toys. So they decided to pitch their own, their own product, their own IP. So 
I think they had a few variations in the Frazetta, Frank Frazetta styled Barbarian uh, won out. And uh, so they decided to create the brand. And the mini comics came about it because as I was trying to sell it to toy companies, I was saying, well, there's no film attached to this. And they said, oh, but there's a mini comic involved. And and uh, oh, well, they, how, how are the kids engaged? Because Saturday morning cartoons are a thing. Oh, well, there's a cartoon involved. So they kind of generated this stuff really around supporting their own toy franchise, which is interesting because after that, it was very much the cartoon um, deal was kind of very, very um, important to them getting an actual deal with the toys because they wanted an area to market it. So, yeah, it's interesting stuff. But, yeah, very cool docker, especially if you love that world. It sort of excites you into creating something. Yeah, the designs are very cool, like, especially when you go through – the classic illustrations. I went, I had a little bit of a rabbit hole while I was, I was going through them and spent an hour just kind of collecting them up um, to post on the Artists of the Universe site, you know, as we're going as little prompters. Um, but yeah, lots of fun. Sword hilt in here. All right, just trying to get that sword centerpiece done there. Got a funny sort of loop around design with the hilt. All right, I think that's it for our He-Man. Now we're just going to clean it up, obviously, and add any effects that I'm going to do coming off of him. Um, but that will give us a nice sort of iconic stance. I mean, ideally, I really wanted him sort of, you know, with the he man with the with the sword in the air. But if I want to keep my um, keep my imagery consistent in terms of size, I had to reduce it in. I would have had to reduce it in to fit it in. So this is probably the the best pose I could play with to uh, to get that kind of right shape that I wanted. Yeah, I agree, Sam. It is a great way of showing styles and stuff the right way. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, Frazetta. I mean, Frazetta was such a, a predominant force in that world. I mean, you know, in the 80s, I mean, it was really the covers were were just so dynamic and, and, uh, and so attractive, you know, on the bookshelf and – Everything, everything sort of spoo spooled out of that, you know, like the imagery of Conan and um, you had people like, uh, um, you know, John Buscemi doing the comic, the Conan comics would, was lending heavily from Frazetta and uh, and you saw it obviously in the Conan movie, you saw it in Ralph Bakshi's Lord of the Rings and Fire and Ice. I mean, all of that drew from that Frazetta influence, Um because he's such a, such a force to be reckoned with, and still is. I mean, he still feeds so much of the influence into what he does. And Joe Jusco is the same. He drew from Rosetta like everyone did, you know, so um, very influential. So that's my He-Man for today. Hopefully, um, if you're drawing along or you, you tend to do that for this next week, um, we'll schedule a live stream for next week, same time, or maybe a little bit earlier, just so we can catch people before it gets too late in the night over there. And um, we'll start laying our gouache finishes for He-Man. And um, so if you're joining me next week, that's what the intention is to try and get to that point. And I'll put in the equipment I'll be using into the comments. So if you are going to tackle the gouaches, um, then definitely uh, it gives you a bit of time to gather your resources and get your image ready. Um, and I'm just using 11 by 17 Bristol that I'm working on. 
Um, I don't tend to use thicker at this stage only because my backgrounds are fairly minimal and um, and it just allows me to build slowly. I tend to like to work slowly with my, my gouache works. Otherwise, it tends to cornflake your paper. So hopefully you enjoyed the live stream. Thanks, Sam, for joining us and anyone else that jumped on board as well. And um, we look forward to seeing you all next time and uh and have a great week everybody <laughs>